Once upon a time, there was a very beautiful doll's house. It was red brick with white windows and had real linen curtains and a front door and a chimney. It belonged to two dolls called Lucinda and Jane. One morning, Lucinda and Jane had gone for a drive in the doll's pram. There was no one in the nursery and it was very quiet. Soon, there was a little scuffling, scratching noise in the corner near the fireplace where there was a hole under the skirting board. Tom Thumb put out his head for a moment, then popped it in again. Tom Thumb was a mouse. A minute afterwards, Hunka Munka, his wife, put her head out too. And when she saw that there was no one in the nursery, she ventured out on the rug under the fireplace. Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka went cautiously across the hearth rug. They pushed the front door. It wasn't locked. Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka went upstairs and peeped into the dining room. Then they squeaked with joy. Such a lovely dinner was laid out on the table. There were tin spoons and lead knives and forks and two dolly chairs, all so convenient. Tom Thumb set to work at once to cut the ham. It was beautiful, shiny yellow, streaked with red. The knife crumpled up and hurt him. He put his finger in his mouth. It's not boiled enough, it's hard. You have a try, Hunka Munka. Hunka Munka stood up in her chair and chopped at the ham with another lead knife. It's as hard as the hams at the cheesemongers, said Hunka Munka. The ham broke off the plate with a jerk and rolled under the table. Leave it alone, said Tom Thumb. Give me some fish, Hunka Munka. Hunka Munka tried every tin spoon in turn. The fish was glued to the dish. Then Tom Thumb lost his temper. He put the ham in the middle of the floor and hit it with tongs and the shovel. Bang, bang, smash, smash. The ham flew into pieces because underneath the shiny paint, it was made of nothing but plaster. <laughs> then there was no end to the rage and disappointment of Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka. They broke up the pudding, the lobsters, the pears and the oranges. As the fish would not come off the plate, they put it into the red hot crinkly paper fire in the kitchen. But it wouldn't burn either. Tom Thumb went up the kitchen chimney and looked out the top. There was no soot. While Tom Thumb was up the chimney, Hunka Munka had another disappointment. She found some tiny cans upon the dresser, labelled rice, coffee, sugar. But when she turned them upside down, nothing came out except red and blue beads. Then those mice set to work to cause all the trouble they could, especially Tom Thumb. He took Jane's clothes out of the chest of drawers in her bedroom and he threw them out of the top floor window. But Hunka Munka had a clever mind. After pulling half the feathers out of Lucinda's pillow, she remembered that she herself wanted a feather bed. With Tom Thumb's assistance, she carried the pillow downstairs and across the hearth rug. It was difficult to squeeze the pillow into the mouse hole, but they managed it somehow. Then Hunka Munka went back and fetched a chair, a bookcase, a birdcage, and several bits and pieces. The bookcase and the birdcage refused to go into the mouse hole. Hunka Munka left them behind the coal box and went to fetch a cot. Hunka Munka was just returning with another chair when suddenly there was a noise of talking outside upon the landing. The mice rushed back into their hole and the dolls came into the nursery. <gasps> what a sight met the eyes of Jane and Lucinda. Lucinda sat on the upside down kitchen stove and stared and Jane leaned against the kitchen dresser and smiled but neither of them made a comment. The bookcase and the birdcage were rescued from under the coal box but Hunka Munka has got the cot and some of Lucinda's clothes. She also has some useful pots and pans and several other things. The little girl that the doll's house belonged to said, I would get a doll dressed like a policeman. But the nurse said, I will set a mouse trap. So that is the story of two bad mice. But they weren't so very, very naughty after all because Tom Thumb paid for everything he broke. He found a crumpled fiver under the hearth rug and on Christmas Eve, he and Hunka Munka stuffed it into the stockings of Lucinda and Jane. And very early every morning before anybody is awake, Hunka Munka comes with her dustpan and her broom to sweep the dolly's house. The end.